Hello and welcome to module 5, part 1 about ongoing monitoring. I am going to walk you through these slides together. Slide 1. Entities shall implement the quality cycle by monitoring and periodically reviewing their programs in terms of their internal quality assurance policy and standards to ensure that they achieve the objectives set for them and respond to the needs of students and society at large. Such reviews shall include input from students and, where applicable, input from external quality assurance reports as well. They shall include students as well as other stakeholders that are benefiting from the outcomes of the programme. In the case of employment-oriented programmes, this also includes stakeholders from the world of work. These reviews shall lead to continuous improvement of the programmes. And any action planned or taken as a result shall be communicated to all those concerned. Ongoing monitoring must make a reference to the PDCA or PIEI cycle, meaning the plan, the do or implement, uh, the check and evaluate, act or improve, and then we have to think how this is going to be done. In slide two, you will see a template with a lot of questions how this is going to be done. Slide three, how we will do this through quantitative and qualitative data. Examples would be uh, interpretation, documentation, communication, external examiners reports, other types of reports, meetings and their minutes, corrective action plans, follow-ups, tracer studies, and research. In the next slide, you will see that you will have first to design a process. What kind of research is necessary here? There are two areas you must think about, the institutional and program research, because ongoing monitoring must be on both. So who are the stakeholders in these areas? General tips. First, build monitoring as a process in your quality assurance manual. So it must be written there. Decide even with all the stakeholders what to monitor, so these will be clearly understood by all. Decide also on a data collection system, procedures for inputs, outputs, and outcomes. Record any important information for ongoing monitoring. This should serve for improvement action. And finally, the process will be complete once evidence is being used for planning the BTCA or PIEI cycle. In slide seven, you have different data from different stakeholders. And you must ask the following questions for this. What is the institution doing best? How can the institution improve? Where do you want to be in the near future? How are you going to get there? And who is to be involved with the stakeholders? What data needs to be collected? And any other additional information? So in the next slide for decisions, you have four steps. The first step is about collecting data. So in slide eight, you have to make certain decisions. And in this slide, you have certain questions about collecting data, about the analyzing of data, about the checking of data, and converting that data. Have a good look at the slide and answer those questions which uh, can be fit to your particular institution. In the next uh, slide, there is a practical form for you. Have a look at this form. You can discuss it with your colleagues and make something similar to that form, which is fit for your institution in order to have the key performance indicators mapped out for you to do very good ongoing monitoring for each department, which every leader will be responsible for his area. In ongoing monitoring, the data collected needs to be translated. The data is interpreted 
and used as evidence. So questions need to be asked about the data for ongoing monitoring to serve as enhancement. All standards for quality must be continuously monitored, and the monitoring is not just internal, but also external. An example of external monitoring is like unemployment rates, like external ongoing type of monitoring. However, this does not provide sufficient detail like local or sectoral employment. Therefore, more specificity is needed. Slide 11, the quality assurance approach. First of all, you have to recruit very good leaders and managers, well qualified. Otherwise, they cannot keep up with good monitoring. The institution needs to promote quality improvement through monitoring to realize the mission and to make the institution a learning organization, whether through teaching or research. The institution needs to monitor the implementation of their work and evaluate its outcomes through an effective quality assurance approach. The questions to ask are, is the institution system still compatible with the country's general education framework? To what extent are key primary stakeholders involved in contributing to the vision and direction of the institution? How does the institution communicate its vision and strategic priorities with the staff? Have the roles and responsibility changed and why? All the above are important to keep on asking for monitoring of standards, the quality assurance policy and management. You can find some more examples and then create your own questions for ongoing monitoring per standard. So information management, which we will speak also in part two, is very important because it will also deal, but just to give you an idea on this slide, the information can be qualitative, which is soft, and quantitative, which is hard. Qualitative, the examples can be like questionnaires or interviews, focus groups or observation, while quantitative can be numerical and can be given through different types of surveys like a census, sample survey, administrative data, and tracer studies. So what are the next questions to ask for monitoring? In the next slide, I will explain this. So the questions to ask for monitoring are these. Is the method of data you are using to collect still making sense to today's needs? Are the types of data collection suitable for selected target groups? If not, how can we collect data to be of significance to today's world? And what are, what are the advantages and disadvantages for each one of the available data of collection? So here, the institution is monitoring what it has been doing right in the past to see how it can solve any disadvantages to enhance its procedures or completely change to the new ones. In the next slide, I would like you to discuss something. So in this slide, there is a discussion for you. With continuous ongoing monitoring, how can one prevent routine from settling in and undermining the motivation to invest the quality assurance with a genuine desire to identify one's weaknesses and to improve? Will external quality assurance be part of ongoing monitoring? In the next slide, I will explain further reading. If you want to read further, read How Should We Measure Higher Education? A Fundamental Review of the Performance Indicators, Part 2, The Evidence Report by Emma Pollard, Matthew Williams, Joy Williams, Christine Bertram, Jonathan Buzeo, IES Emma Drever, Julia Griggs, and Steve Coutinho, the 10 of 2013. Or read my notes. Thank you for listening.